What were the major pitfalls that you discovered along the way and how did you avoid them? Major pitfalls? I don't, well, I, I don't, th- I don't think we haven't had any major uh, Good. pitfalls. I think, <laughs> you know, I, think uh, I think you've got to, uh, you know, we've talked in this interview a lot of areas of, of, of running the trust. And I touched on the fact that we took staff from um, you know, from the local authority uh, through two P into the museum. So, and it was a big change for staff. I think it took quite, um, quite a long time to to um, feel comfy uh, working in a, in a in a trust environment. So, uh, the change in working environment was not something to underestimate. Uh, Did you find there was quite a big culture culture difference coming from one to the other? Yeah, massively. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's more difficult, certainly for our front of house staff. You know, many staff who are very used to working in a local authority, you know, it was uh, who wouldn't have been like in my role uh, as the um, as, as the uh, as the as the museum manager back for the local authority. You know, my you know my routine work with the local authority was trying to trying to get funding, and it was always a bit of it was always a battle. So I was always aware of the risks, um, and it you know it wasn't. You know, it, was a, it was a difficult time, but um, of course, this is after you know after the after the crash yes. in two thousand. So, you know, those are really difficult times. So, you, I think, if you were if you were trying to to um, get budgets, if you're in an organisation, you know, getting you know getting um, responsible for putting in budgets to run your museum service, it's very difficult back then. So, I saw certainly all all the uh, disadvantages, but I think if you're lower down in the organisation, perhaps you didn't necessarily, those weren't so apparent. Uh, so I think for many staff it was quite, you know, it, it was it was a, a difficult change from being uh, from working for for a local authority with all those departments and uh, all that support yeah. and uh, indeed you know all, that, all those things that they, they um, were um, you know, comfy with to moving to a trust which is very different, uh, very very hands on with that this massive organisation behind it. Yeah. But coming through with two P, of course, all those staff t- took their existing. Um, benefits with them, mm. so we all took those with them. You know, subsequently, of course, you know, uh, when you start recruiting the trust, uh, you, you then employ people without those, mm. without those benefits. So you do have a, a, a you know, a, if you like, two two tiers of stuff. Those with two yeah. those those who look forward to benefit and those without, and, and gradually that also changes over time yeah. as as people with those benefits leave. How long did you? find that your, your original cohort staff took to readjust? I think it took several years. Several years. <laughs> but, you know, having said that, you know, we, we've we kept most of our staff and we don't have much, we don't have a, a big staff turnover. So uh, <clears throat> it's just, a, it's just, it, so it's a, it was a, um, it was a, a successful process, but yeah. yeah it is. It is quite. It, it was quite a tough thing, and it took staff quite a long time to to change to to get used to that new environment. As you say, they've, they've got to take time to get comfy. <laughs> exactly, and and we were all learning um, the the uh, you know new roles, the job. Yeah, you know, all of us were were learning what is you know how, uh, we were learning um, you know how to run a museum as a, tr- a charity. Yeah, we were, we were all, we we're all novices, yeah. uh, and you can you know you can read many of good advice, but. Um, we were learning on the job for sure. It was great. It was really good that we did bring in those um, building blocks of support uh, in terms of uh, looking at our fundraising and indeed the development plan and, uh, and, and subsequent uh, consultants that we brought in to, to, to bring us up to speed and uh, to provide that training. So those small bouts of consultancy that you you've Oh yeah, they were they've vital. They've been really useful then. Oh, for sure. I don't, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, I don't. It would be much, much more difficult without it, because mm-hmm. you just want to. If you're a small team, you know you can't. You you, you can't be an expert in all these areas. You just need to bring in someone, <laughs> you know, to 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 uh, you know to 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 fulfil a particular for a particular need. Like in our case, we, you know, we needed to raise. We needed to be an organisation which can, which could um, you know raise funds, uh, for yeah. a charity, um, and. You know, you don't. You won't know as, as a local authority. If you've been working in local authorities, you're not going to know that. Mm. You're, just not, you're going to have very little experience of it because it's completely different yeah. in the charitable sector. Um, you know, fantastically uh, liberating, 
you know, really, really good, but you won't have, you're unlikely to have those skills. So you need to, you need, it's really, it was really good for us to bring in someone who was, who, who had lots of experience in that area and worked alongside us, uh, saying, okay, we've got to change that, that's awful. <laughs> this is how you should be talking about it, and this is how you should think, this is how you should be thinking about working with new partners and finding new supporters. Uh, and everything is about, you know, and now, you know, for us, you know, partnerships is, is partnerships and everything we do is just, it's just central. You know, it's partnerships with people who can support you with money or with skills or, you know, it's a, absolutely a, um, a community and partnership endeavour. Is it something you had to budget for as, as extra in your transfer to trust for those that We didn't budget for it. We didn't. We didn't really budget for it. We did. We did actually have. We did actually have a <clears throat> a small a sum of money, which was like a loan mm. from the local authority to pay for, you know, one offs. But we had to pay it back. In in terms of in terms of um, you know, there's other skills you need to bring in. Um, so we did have a, a we did have we were able to draw down on that. But actually, we we provide we source most of the additional income we need from from arts council grants. I see. Um, so they provided. Is it something, if you were to do this process again, do you think you would set aside some funding or some time to apply for funding so that you knew that you could draw on the expertise you needed? Yeah, you, yeah. <clears throat> as it turned out, we got, we got all the funding we needed. Um, so, but I think, I think if, you, if, you're, you know, getting, if you're embarking on the trust journey, you need to, I think, plan very clearly, absolutely looking at other museums, what they do, uh, and then plan your own strategy. You know, it's all about, it's about talking to people, isn't it? And there's lots of examples of museums run by, you know, run, run this trust. So we certainly chatted to people who had done, who had, you know, had been, uh, yeah, who had uh, yeah, engaged in that process to, to, to um, you know, to, uh, to copy. Were there any that were particularly <laughs> helpful? Well, uh, I certainly I spent ten time talking to the Reverend Rowe Museum back then, um, and 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 some others, yeah. But you know, every 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 environment is different, isn't it? And so, in some ways, you can't just you can't sort of drop a particular model into a particular community. You need to look at you know what that community has. Like in, in, in Banbury has a lot of a lot of opportunity, but uh, and, and we've we've tweaked it for our you know for our. Um, our, uh, you know, environment. Mm. But yeah, you know, planning and thinking what you'll need to to be successful. At, and yeah, well, I'm not sure you can avoid all of them. <laughs> um, and I think uh, there's always a set of compromises um, on 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 your journey. Um, but I think it's it's about keeping the overall uh, ambition, the overall. Um, vision and the overall end end uh, game or end stage because you obviously move you know someone else will take up and move move to the next stage so um it's always about keeping that in, in very clearly in your mind and being very strategically focused on, on on where you're going and how you're going to get there and what you need to get there um i think i'd spoken already about the challenge of not having your funding position clearly in place at the outset, which we learned from others uh, experiences and we worked hard to um, avoid in terms of the grant funding agreements. And when I say we, I don't just mean the trust, I mean the local authorities, I mean the councillors, the chief officers, you know, that there was a real strong commitment to making sure that that didn't, didn't happen. Um, and um, I think part of that is also cash flow. It's a very, very simple sort of um, thing. But uh, as soon as you move to an independent organisation, um, money doesn't necessarily magically appear in your bank account. And you need to, you know, again, flying the plane while building it, you need to be able to continue to, you know, pay your, pay your team, you know, pay your bills, et cetera, et cetera from day one, no one's going to give you give you space on that. So your funding agreements really need, and your funding structure need, really needs to be, um, uh, to give you a robust cash flow uh, from day one for a number of reasons, not least 
the reasons I've just said, but also so you are not spending from day one all your time chasing down, getting money into the account, and you can focus on everything else that you need to put in place um, before um, you, you um, uh, need to worry about, uh, about the money too much. Um, so we set up again uh, the generosity of the two local authorities. We set up so that they would pay for the first three years, they would pay a grant um, uh, or they would consider the business case for paying the, uh, the grant up front for a year um, each time rather than quarterly. Uh, and then after that, it moved, moved to quarterly. Um, so that gave you that space to, to not worry about, OK, at the end of each quarter, we've got to, you know, we've got to be putting the, 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 the business case into, into the local uh, authority again and, and asking for that, for that, for that payment. Um, and by the time you've got three years under your belt, uh, two to three years under your belt, you're in a position cash flow wise and everything else wise to, to, to focus on that. Um, you need to have yeah real engagement between the council and the charity um and i think one of the things that we were conscious of very conscious of is that we were bringing three groups of people together into a team and building a team with three groups of people with different terms and conditions so we had hampshire county council employees we had winchester city council employees and we also had um, new employees for the trust employed under Hampshire Cultural Trust terms and conditions. So very early on, we um, uh, invested in additional HR resource, people resource to support the growth of the team environment, but also over time to, to look at ways that that could be started to be brought together into a more cohesive kind of team structure. 